let's go back into the let's get on the right window installing window maker so it says i chose to install or choose to install window maker as the window manager this is because i'm used to window maker for quite a while now and i'm very satisfied with it as usual you don't have to do what i'm doing install whatever you want as you might know you can install several window managers simultaneously and choose which one and so on so we've got several packages here there's this lib prop um lib xpm just checking that i've got all of these in the right hand window before i carry on um lib png which we've got uh lib png i don't know perhaps i haven't actually is that another one i've got to fetch Flip JPEG. Right, it looks for some reason I haven't got the lib PNG. I don't know what happened there. Um, I'm gonna have to reboot and get that one installed as well. Uh, right, okay. So we've got TIFF. Got lib JPEG got lib ungif and I have got the window maker which I've got to download so it's just that uh, lib png and I don't know why I haven't got that one now So what I'm going to do is to pause the video and come back in a moment after I've uh, sorted that out um, and put it on the server so I can download it. Right, okay, so that's copied onto the server now. So what I can do is to download it. So let's use the right mouse. Uh, so where am I at the moment? sources extra okay looks like the I just realized the um, TWM which is the tab window manager which is the window manager you can see at the moment um, uses its own settings because it's lost the um, settings I've done to alter the PS1 the prompt the first prompt so I'm just going to uh, run profile to set that just so I know where I am so or, so I can see where I am at least so I'm in the directory that I want to be so what I want to do now is to connect to the server on this window uh, but this time it's to download the packages So I've got to download Window Maker, so it's that one there. Save it to disk. And libpng. That should be it. So I'll quit that and I can get on now with building the packages. So what I'm going to do is just highlight the bit I'm doing because it's a bit difficult to read because it's all one font, it's all one color. So unpack the lib prop list archive. So is that cat lib prop list? Yeah, it looks like the configuration for the keyboard has been set up right. Um, if you remember when we did the configuration, it asked what keyboard it was. And I had to tell it um, it had 102 keys and it was a UK keyboard. 
so the keyboard is configured correctly for the environment so that's good so the bar is working the hash is working um, the quotes are working um, okay the pound sign isn't but it looks like it's inserting a remark but that's not a problem uh, a hash to comment out the the prompt so um Z cat pro list i want to push this through tar change into it and we need to configure the package by running configure And now we build it with make. And let's paste that in to install it. And that's that one done. Tidy up. And move on to libxpm. So it's a cat libxpm. Right, this one's actually just called xpm as I remember. Yeah. Tar minus XV CD XPM. So prepare the compilation by running XMKF make files. Right, let's do one of these, each one of these at a time, just so that we can check the output of them. So that one's okay, it's simple enough. Make make files. Got make includes. Let's see if we can copy that without the space. Right, I'm not sure that copied correctly. I didn't think it would. So I'm going to start again because um, I don't know what condition the source is in now. So XMKMF, then make make files. Yeah, it seems that this has picked up uh, like a carriage return. Um, maybe when it's done this bit here, when it's gone over the line here, so it's not intelligent enough to pick up from the web page that it is all one line and it's been it's been wrapped around. So. That's a bit unfortunate. It's something to bear in mind if um, copy anything else. You can see it's just got the make there on its own. So it wasn't do, doing the right thing. So what I'm going to do is to, I'll just copy that, put a space in, copy that and paste that and then run it like that. That looks better. Now make depend. It says ignore the warning about not being able to find the X11 XPM file from make depend. Okay, I'm not sure if I can see that anywhere. No, can't see that, so it's obviously not a problem. Compile the package by running make. So let's build it. So down here.
Right, now it says about the compilation will abort because XPM the H file cannot be found. Now it doesn't look like it has aborted. Um, it looks like it has completed. Um, so what I'm going to do is just go straight on to making sort of, to be honest, I can't remember what happened when I did this. Oh, what have I done now? Typing on the wrong window. Um, so what I'm going to do is attempt to install it in one go as I don't appear to have had any of those errors and yes it does seem to have worked correctly so I can't explain why that is whether it's because I've got a slightly newer version of no, I haven't got a new version of anything X related comes to think of it, because I? I took it all off the SUS. So no, I don't know. It might be slightly different to what the author has done. Um if we do get problems then I know I can come back and install it as exactly as per the book. So let's tidy that up and move on to libpng. So unpack it, compile the package for running make minus f scripts make file dot lnx. So let's paste that in. Okay, that's done so it looks like we've produced the same command with install at the end to install it and it looks like that's it so let's just go to the next page to see if there is anything else no there isn't just libtiff next so i'm going to tidy that one up libpng and extract libtiff so libtiff's just called tiff. So configure it by running configure. In fact, this looks like a standard configure make install. So let's see, we should have that command still. There it is there. Just let that run through all the way to the end. Right, it's actually asking us some questions. Um, I presume they're okay because it doesn't say to do anything otherwise. So let's just press enter there.
Okay, that's complete. And now we've gone to libjpeg. So configure the package we're running, configure. So we've got a command that's split over two lines again. So I'm going to do a bit at a time. Enable shared and enable static as well unusually. Uh, right, okay, I've got to put the period in the forward slash in front. So that's done. Now we compile it with this command here, make libjpeg.la. Oh, right, okay, that's strange. Right, and uh, let's have a quick look at the make file, see if there's any hints in that. Uh, yeah, something I thought about last night was there's a command called alias. I barely use it, um, where you can say um, I want a command called, for example, vi to be the same as another command that does exist. So, because I keep typing vi and forgetting there's only vim, if I type that, I should be able to now use vi without having to think about vim. So, it'll be quite useful. So, let's see what targets we've got here. So it looks like just running make, which is the default all, I believe, will compile a static file there. Um, test. Yeah, I think that'll do it. So again, probably got a different version of JPEG to what the author used. So I'm just going to run make on its own. and hope that it produces enough uh, to make the package functional. Okay, so now let's just install and inspect to see what it's done. So it's created a couple of binaries there, some more there, and some man pages. Can't actually see any static um, files that have been installed. Um, uh, unless these are static programs in, in themselves, that's possible. Let's just have a look at that. Mm, probably not that size, 81K. Uh, although I haven't said that, there's no libraries that have been installed, so they probably are standalone. <clears throat> well, we'll see. Um, I'm finding it's incredible that I can't remember doing any of this. Um, maybe I didn't really, I certainly didn't make any notes and I may have just done this off the cuff thinking it wouldn't work or be a lot of problems setting up X windows and so on um, and didn't care much for it until I got it working and then I think in my mind since then I've decided that I will do a video on it. It wasn't my intention initially to do a video on this so uh, it's probably like lack of preparation because it, I didn't intend to, as I say, do this. But touch wood, everything's going okay at the moment. 
So let's remove the JPEG folder and we go to lib ungif next. So I said cat lib ungif. And we run configure first of all. In fact, we can do a whole lot. Not to worry, it's already started now. So I build it. Right, so we can install that now. And tidy up. And we move on to Window Maker. So unpack it, configure it with configure. Okay, we'll say here JPEG was not support. JPEG was not installed correctly, was not found. Okay, so it looks like that JPEG didn't get built correctly. So what couldn't it find if we look back here? So it couldn't find JPEG destroy compress in the library JPEG. So I'll carry on um, because it does say it just says that JPEG support would not be com com uh, included, not that the package won't build or anything. Um, it looks like it's background images and themes that it's going to affect, so it's not a great um, big deal. Um, so yeah, it needs some more examination about how to build JPEG correctly for Window Maker. So I'm going to time this being built, and as you can see, it's being built with the older version of the compiler we've got installed, and we'll wait that wait for that to complete now.
Right, so that was reasonably fast, just under four minutes. So let's install Window Maker. And then update the dynamic loader cache for running LD config. And then we've got to configure Window Maker. Every user who wishes to use Window Maker has to run the wmaker.int script before he or she can use it. The script will copy the necessary files to the user's home directory and modify the .x in it RC file or create it if it's not there yet. So let's run that. So it's called wmaker inst it says now the dot x init rc dot x clients or dot x session script must be updated so that it calls wmaker when you start an x session type the name of the file that must be changed normally dot x init rc so let's just press enter installation finished there are two different farm there are menus in two different file formats, plain text format and property list format. Okay, so that's if you want to create menus, I imagine, inside the machine, uh, inside the environment. So let's just quickly look at that file it's created. Dot X in it. I'll see. And yes, it's executing WMaker. So what I'm going to do now is to quit uh, this um, TWM environment and because Xinit has been set for the root user, when the root user now runs StarTex, we'll be in the Window Maker environment. So I'm just going to, well, I'll tidy this up first of all. And quit this. And control D to quit the session. And I'll just type star text there. I won't bother waiting for the screen to sync up because it's going to have to sync up again. It looks like it's synced up anyway. And yes, there is the window maker that's come up. Um, you right click the desktop to get a menu up and you can basically access anything from there. Although obviously there's not going to be a lot installed by default. Um, because we haven't got these, so it seems like these are static menu items. So Netscape, obviously, we haven't got a ghost view and so on. So there's not going to be much you can do via. Let's see if that runs. Yeah, but it has. I presume that screen's come up red because I'm root. All right, it can't execute via. Probably because via doesn't exist. It was just a temporary alias that I created in the other environment. So if I type it now, you can see it doesn't run. I'd have to set this permanently in the roots environment. Uh, oh, okay, this is this is keyboard. Uh, the debounce doesn't work very well on some of the keys, so you can see it's working there. So whether that means that the option here would work, it probably doesn't because it would apply to that that particular session of that terminal that's come up. I'm not sure why it's stayed red though. Let's quit. Because it's quite hard on the eyes that is. And run the StarTex again. Yeah, that's a bit better. So, yeah, you can see it's working anyway. There's some stuff there what you could actually do with it at the moment there's as i say there's barely anything there um obviously you can get the next term up yeah i reckon that's turning red that background because i'm root and it's giving us a terminal so it's warning us that we're root doing root commands uh, i'm not sure what these icons are that doesn't seem to all oh, right okay all right this is settings preferences utility so you can make some default changes here Okay, change the appearance and so on. Okay, that's quite good. What's this one do? 
So that's a, all right, that's a terminal. That one doesn't appear to do anything. Not sure what that is. I've never used this before, as you can tell. Although I did look up about it on the internet and it's still going. It's still being, there was a release made this year recently. So um, I've, I've never heard of it and never used it before. So quite pleasing to see a project that has lasted that long. So anyway, that, that is the end. Um, as I said, I didn't really intend to do the last bit with X Windows or X386 and certainly not with Window Maker, but as you can see, it's worked fine. The main issue or the main thing was to get Linux from scratch 1.0 installed, which obviously we've achieved because we've now compiled extra software. Um, what I might do um, certainly next year now, we're near the end of this year. Is to possibly um, do another early Linux from scratch using Linux 1.0 as the host system. Um, I've thought about doing it all the way up to the modern one, but um, I'm not sure about that. That might be slightly pointless but it'll be good to see how we can get again from still a very early version of Linux from um, 24 years ago to a newer one um, and how how many years we could cover you know could could we go to version 2 would it stretch as far as version 3 or perhaps even version 4 um, so that might be quite interesting and even seeing again how uh, Linux from scratch has changed in, in a few years so thank you very much for watching I hope it's been enjoyable to to watch the videos watch it being built um, and if you build it yourself I hope you enjoy doing it yourself um, if you enjoyed them I appreciate a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already to hear uh, about other stuff that I do thanks very much goodbye